Welcome to HD TV. You're now rocking with your boy. <laughs> Space Jam fans roast LeBrownie's blames for recruiting Superman and Gandalf when Michael Jordan only needed Bill Murray and Newman. <laughs> The first official trailer for Space Jam A New Legacy was released earlier today and fans of the original movie have a lot of opinions on LeBrownie's Blames version. Many folks seem excited about the long-awaited sequel, but others are pointing out that Blames can't compete with the original film star Michael Jordan. The new movie will see a whole bunch of iconic characters from Warner Brothers properties and a moment in the trailer sees James making a list of his dream team, which includes Superman, Gandalf, King Kong, and Iron Giant. In classic Twitter fashion, many people have taken the social media site to roast blames for needing such heavy hitters when Jordan only needed the Looney Tunes, Bill Murray, and Wayne Knight, a.k.a. Newman from Seinfeld. <laughs> Before checking out some of the hilarious tweets from OG Space Jam fans, you can view the cast list for Space Jam A New Legacy below. In addition, James Space Jam A New Legacy stars Don Cheeto, Sinequa, Martin Green, and Dom James. Warner Brothers has yet to confirm which professional basketball players will be involved in a new legacy but rumors and reports have suggested that nba and wnba stars in the film include damian lillard draymond triple single green chris no knee paul chinese agumike neka agumike diana tarasi aka baby kobe clay thompson and Cottonelle Davis. You can view some of the tweet reactions to the trailer below. LeBron can't even do Space Jam without assembling a super team. <laughs> Michael Jordan won that ish with Bill Murray and Newman from Seinfeld. <laughs> LeBron, I need Superman and Gandalf to beat the Monstars in Space Jam. <laughs> Jordan beat the Monstars with Bill Murray running point but LeBrownies need Superman to beat Don Cheeto <laughs> Bill Murray greater than LeBron's team list hashtag Space Jam the GOAT debate is over after that new Space Jam trailer LeBrownies out here trying to recruit Superman and Gandalf and MJ went out and beat wholesale Monstar A with Bill Murray and Newman from Seinfeld. Jordan beat the Monstars with Bill Murray. As you can see here, according to the trailer Space Jam 2, LeBrownies tries to recruit his own elite team to defeat the bad guys to save his son. Michael Jordan, on the other hand, only needed Bill Murray to save the Looney Tunes. Everybody talking about Michael Jordan beat the Monstars with just Bill Murray. Like, that wasn't Bill Murray in his prime. <laughs> Hoping Michael Jordan, Wayne Knight, and Bill Murray show up at the end of Space Jam. Like, <laughs> and they doing the Justice League picture. In conclusion, Bill Murray should have won an Oscar for Space Jam. <laughs> I mean, look, I just asked, where is the originality? Like, where's the originality, man? I mean, it's... You know, it's like, where is it? Where is the originality? Where is it? You know, and this is what the backlash you're going to get for trying to copy 
<laughs> for trying to copy MJ. It's like, dude, you're not MJ. You'll never be MJ. <laughs> You'll never be MJ. And it's and it's nothing wrong with you not being MJ. Like I said, if he would have stayed after he lost to Boston that year and came back, went to go train, see, that was your moment to capture. You would have been loved by everybody. All Everybody, nobody hated LeBron. Everybody just saw that LeBron's problem is he just didn't know how to close at the time. And Michael Jordan, his first years when he lost to the Pistons when they were this close in, 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 in 1990, playoffs, they lost. But you know what Mike did? He came back. He worked harder, got his guys gathered, and they went back and won. That was going to be your moment. You were going to come back with your team, beat them, and get to the championship. But no, you like, man, I got to go get all the best all-stars, the best role players, the best. I got to put the best team together. And you're doing it in Space Jam. So this shows you what type of mindset this guy has. He thinks like a GM but he doesn't want to put in the work like a player. You have all this talent. Like, seriously, LeBron is probably one of the most talented athletes we've ever seen in history. I think he's probably the best transition player that I've ever seen. Like, in the transition, the open floor, the guy is amazing. But as far as a half-court set and as far as the elevation of your teammates, he can't do it. And this is what I try to tell his fans. This isn't hate. This isn't talking bad about him. It's just the truth. Even Space Jam fans, <laughs> Space Jam fans said he need the Superman and all of these guys. But Mike just needed Bill Murray and, and Newman <laughs> from side <laughs> Oh my gosh, dog. This is crazy. This is real crazy to me, man. You know, I mean, look. I just feel like his moment would have came. I thought he was going to stay in Cleveland and come back, but people was like, no, nah, he going to Miami. So I knew he was going. Because people in all uh, Miami was saying, man, we getting King James. I'm like, oh, okay, so he finna go. And I didn't have a problem with him going to Miami. The problem I had with King James, I don't even have a problem with him stacking his teams. The problem I have with him is, is that you're trying to say you're the greatest of all time. But yet you have never made anybody better. Kevin Durant, when he went to the Golden State Warriors, do you know he elevated everybody's play on both sides of the court, but he doesn't get any credit because everyone's like, that's a 73-9 team when it wasn't the same 73-9 team. Kevin Durant, let, he raised the offensive game of Curry, of Clay, of Draymond. Kevin Durant also was a person who facilitated as well. They didn't know KD could do these things. KD played better in Golden State than he ever did in OKC because they utilized his skill set. And that's what I was trying to tell people between him and Westbrook is that they just don't mesh. They needed that guy who could facilitate. They didn't have a floor general in OKC. Westbrook is more of a he's more of a two guard. So is Kevin Durant. Kevin Durant is a two guard. He's just huge. He's just seven feet. But he's a two guard and a, and, a, and and he could play the three position. He could play the three. The small four position. But he's really a two. 
So when you have two of these guys with the mindset of scoring, 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 they're going to neglect trying to get the ball to their teammates. And that's the thing with James Harden, a.k.a. James Chokedon did when he was with them. Chokedon knew how to slow the pace down. He knew how to get the ball to the players who needed it. He knew how to set the offense up like he's doing now. He's always been a point guard. He's a better Steve Nash. I keep telling people, everybody look at me crazy like, man, he ain't nowhere. Steve Nash, no. Harden, <laughs> Chokedon is Steve Nash. If you put Chokedon on that Suns team and replace him with Steve Nash, they would still have the same success. I think they would have been a lot better because of his, his um, he would have been a matchup nightmare for the Spurs. Whereas Steve Nash, all they did was run Steve Nash to his left or they pushed him on. Um, they used to just body him up, used to get physical with him. Chokedon you could get physical with, but Chokedon still would be able to get the passes out and still do well. It's just when the playoffs in a big game, that's when he'll come alive to be Chokedon. You know, but um, like I said, this is what happens when you're trying to take a movie that you know, his baldness made. His baldness made this movie. And now you're going to get roasted from all sides because you're not creating your own legacy. Kobe Bryant and everybody, everybody wanted to um talk trash about it. But I'm like, look. It's like, look, his baldness came out. He was he was a terrible actor as well. But the thing he did was the aura and the presence he had. He made his team better. He learned how to make the extra pass. He learned how to make a Pippin better or a Simpin, I like to say, or a Steve overglorified Kerr. <laughs> you know, he taught them how to win games. And that's the difference. When Mike left, they won that first year. But the second year, they were struggling. Because Horace Grant was a vital piece. And I keep telling people, Horace Grant was more valuable than Scottie Pippen. <laughs> Scottie Pippen was not more valuable than Horace Grant. And I told people, because Scottie Simpin, he had a problem guarding the bigger defenders. And when he tried to get on the blocks and rebound, he used to get muscled. And he used to get punked. The, the Knicks used to punk him all the time. Mike would have to come save him every time. <laughs> so let me know in the comment section what you think about the, the fans trolling. To me, I don't like his baldness or LeBrownies. I can't stand neither one of them. I don't like those 23s. But his baldness was a hell of a phenomenal player. And I respect his game a lot more than LeBronis. Thank you for listening. Like, comment, subscribe, share this. Hit the notification bell to select all to receive upcoming notifications. And if you'd like to donate to the page, you can cash at me at the word welcome, the number two, and an HDII TV. Thank you for listening, and we're out. Deezy!